I am very fortunate uh, in my lifetime I have had one job that I didn't like and I've had a bunch of them. Uh, at any other time I might have retired from the company but I had just gotten out of the Navy. Uh, my mom already had this job before I got home. man across the street worked there. Uh, he got me the job. I lasted three nights and I just wasn't ready. Uh, so I told him if it won't make him mad I'm going to quit and so I fished for two weeks. And then I went construction job to uh, uh, a machine shop job to uh, a telephone job. I got hurt on that job and had to retire. And in this business, I'll be 42 years in August. And I dearly love this. Meet the nicest people, some of the better stories you will ever hear. Uh, it is unreal. The truth is always stranger than fiction. An eight month late eight month pregnant lady jumping out of a bass boat to get a bass. It's hilarious. Uh, everybody that walks through the door's got a story. And and it's just amazing. And uh I guess it was about 15 years ago, I started putting some thoughts down, just on paper. And a few little stories, and uh, my little book, many years ago, I was born and raised in Stigler, Haskell County, Oklahoma. A little two-room two school community. The, this family moved in, the little boy had polio. He couldn't walk. All he could do is barely crawl. It's two and a half miles to school. His dad bought him a donkey and built him a two-wheel cart. He hooked the donkey up to the cart, placed the boy belly down on the cart, and he drove the donkey two and a half miles to school. Gets to school, we would take him off if it were warm, set him under a shade tree. If not, we'd carry him in the house. That has remained in my mind forever. Uh, I was just, well, I, I know I was less than in the seventh grade. But the little book uh, I wrote basically from that experience. The title of the little book is You Can Do It. It amazed all of us the fortitude that kid had. Now, you lay down on a cart on a bumpy road for two and a half miles on your stomach. It's not very, very comfortable, but he did it twice a day. If he can do it, you can do it. And the draft board was a man almost kin to me. So we moved to Bigsby. I graduated Bigsby High School. And I would call back down to Stigler to see what my number in the draft was. Well, in my senior class, there were seven boys that was already in the Naval Reserve. And of course, they start jumping me for Navy. And I, well, what, what, what do you do in the Navy? Yeah. Well, how's the food? Oh, it's good. It's good. And I said, what do you have to eat? And Harley, my best buddy, he said, well, you eat a lot of beans. Now, what kind of beans? Well, Navy beans. So I joined the Navy. The child wasn't near as good as he said it was, but I, I had some good experiences. I, I was a storekeeper. Uh, I have to say that I'm extremely proud of the fact. Worldwide, they promoted 152 storekeepers to second class, and I was one of the 152. So that's that's... For me, that was an accomplishment. We had 12 subs in our uh, squadron, and uh, we supplied them whatever they needed. My ship carried. Uh, we, I went. I was home ported in Charleston, South Carolina, and when my first great granddaughter was born, she was born in Charleston, South Carolina. We go down there. Pilots Point is a uh, Naval Museum. 
and we go down there. I, I went down there. They have the old flat top, the Hornet, the, uh, the a destroyer that was home ported in Charleston, and then they had a submarine. And I look at that submarine, and a bell goes off, and uh, uh, Clamagor, SS Clamagor, uh, 443, I think the number was. So I go in and I ask the gentleman's running place if this sub was home ported in Charleston. No, no, New London, Connecticut. And I said, well, I would have sworn that was in my squadron. Oh, no, no. Well, I go out to uh, where the war started, was Fort Sumter. And I come back and go back in the store and he gives me a pamphlet and I'm reading it as I'm walking out to my truck. SS Clamagore, 443, home ported in Charleston, South Carolina. That was one of my subs. And I remembered her. I named this thing an Indian's Creed. But the more I thought about it, it is the American Creed. I love this great country. Please show me that I am loved. I don't know what the future may hold, but with faith, courage, determination, and guidance from above, I'll help it unfold. Love, guidance, and respect from you, I ask. Regardless of what I did in the past, I ask compassion and forgiveness when I do wrong. I pray my mistakes will help me grow strong. Don't judge me by the things which you have done, because I know with your help the best is yet to come. Millions of veterans have fought to make this country great. For that, I say thanks. This is my prayer for all mankind. May war in my generation be left behind. Because what I've been taught, these things I vow. I'll always practice the golden rule. Until I get my degree, I'll stay in school. I'll respect our flag and a good example try to be. I'll do my best to help us remain free. I'll respect and uphold the laws of this land. Against wrong, I will take a stand. To others, I'll try never to offend. But freedom and justice, I will always defend. I'll never use the words, I can't. Because I know where the future is concerned, I pray, common sense I never lack, and I'll always remember, impossibility is an opinion, not a fact. May God bless America. Thank you.